Hi! This video is about doing combinatorial constructions with lists in OCaml. Let's start. What do I mean by combinatorial constructions? Well, the ones that I'm gonna show you are uh, finding all the subsets of a given set, uh, finding all the subsets of a certain size, and finding all permutations of a list. Now, uh, lists can be seen as a possible representation for multi-sets, but most of the time I'm just going to pretend they're representing sets. You can imagine if you under sub somebody tested before that their elements are indeed unique. Anyway, so let's start with finding all the subsets. We'll have to look at the two possible cases for a list, the empty list and the non-empty list. How many subsets does the empty set have? Has uh, well only one, the empty subset itself. But if uh, we have a list that has an element and some tail, then we could recursively compute the subsets for the tail. But we also have to take into account the subsets that contain the current element. So let's write what I just said. empty subset and empty set has one subset the empty subset itself and here we recursively compute the subsets of the tail we return those but also those that contain the current element which you obtain by prepending x to all the other subsets this function which prepends an element to all the subsets I define separately because um, it's useful in a few situations this cons function is essentially the same as the value constructor for lists that has the built-in notation column column but I define it as a function because I need to pass it around in some languages you could just treat the constructor itself as a function so, uh, value and pass it around but in OCaml you need to define a function corresponding to it okay let's see if this compiles Yes, it does. Second construction, we want to put a bound on the size of the subsets. So we want to implement a function that takes an integer and a list and gives us all subsets of size k of the list xs. Now we have certain uh, a, a few cases. If k is 0, then it doesn't matter what x is, if it's empty or not. Uh, the answer is going to be only one subset, the empty, empty set. If k is positive, on the other hand, uh, then uh, we need to look at the two possible cases for x's. So it helps to, to look at combinations of values for k and x's. Let's see what I said earlier. I said if k is 0 and it doesn't matter what x's is, the answer is one subset, the empty one. Otherwise, if it's not 0, <coughs> k is not 0, and x is, is empty we have only we, we don't have any subset of a positive size of the empty list and um, finally in the last case 
where k is positive and the list is non-empty we could do two things one is to compute the subsets of size k minus 1 of the tail and prepend x and the other thing we could do is to just pick subsets of size k from the tail ok so let's see if this compiles ok does finally the last <coughs> problem is listing all permutations to list all permutations of a list we will pick the first element and then recursively compute all permutations of the rest of the elements now to pick the first element we could we need to loop through the list and say okay the first element could be could uh, go in the permutation first the second element of the list could go in the permutation first and so on so we'll have a loop I will implement <coughs> as a recursive function this this loop goes over the list when it gets to the end well it will do something we'll see later what but while it traverses the list it keeps track of the elements it saw so far so now it's a y y is the current element and for the next iteration it says uh, I'm gonna keep track of it in this axis so axis is an accumulator that keeps track of the elements so, so, f so far we're gonna n and now I'm gonna add another accumulator which contains permutations and they're gonna be they're gonna be all the permutations starting with some element which was already seen and therefore is in excess when we get to the end of the list, we just return the permutations because we've seen all the elements. And if we did not get to the end, what we do is we compute the permutations starting with y and we append them to the accumulator. So the permutations starting with y are uh, obtained by prepending y to the permutations of the other elements which are the ones seen so far and the ones coming after y and these permutations need to be added to the accumulator finally we have uh, one special case for the empty list where which has exactly one permutation otherwise if there's some non-empty list we use the looping function that we have above uh, this starts in the initial phase didn't see any elements and therefore didn't compute any permutations and this will begin being accumulated does it compile? ok it does compile now it's time to test a little bit uh, all this code I'm loading the file in an interpreter so let's see some example the subsets of 1, 2, 3, 4 are these ones now if we want to choose subsets of size 3 of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for example we get these ones <coughs> permutations permutations of 1, 2, 3 there are 6 of them let's see how far we can go with the permutations of course we can't really print very long list but we can check their lengths in this case it would be 6 but we cannot say 4, 5, 6 still works quite fast 7, 8 now we can see a little bit of a delay let's try it with 9 it still works what about 10? Oops, 10 goes out of the step. 
Why does that happen? Well, that happens because we used some functions that are not tail recursive. So there's going to be a lot of st call stack frames used. One of those functions is list concatenation, and the other function is map. Both of them are not tail recursive. Because we don't care about the order in which uh, elements are in this list that we're using because we treat them as sets essentially, we can use the equivalent functions that are tail recursive. RevMap and for list concatenation we just use the version that reverses the first list but is tail recursive. So let's try now to reload it and see if it works. It takes some time. Didn't give stack overflow yet, at least. And it even prints a result. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you. <coughs> now a few questions that you might want to think about. One of them is related to this uh, runtime. Uh, so let's measure the runtime a little bit more precisely. I'm gonna complete this program to one that prints the size of the list that uh, you just saw here. Okay. But I'm going to compile it to an optimized version, to native code, and when I run it, I will time it to see exactly how much time it takes. Okay, it takes about 6 seconds. Now I'm going to modify the program slightly. I'm going to prepend the accumulator rather than append it, put it at the end, recompile, rerun. It takes 9, almost 10 seconds. The difference in runtime is quite reliable. The first question is why does the order matter here? That you might want to think about. Another thing that you might want to think about is how to implement some similar functions. Uh, for example, a Cartesian product that would be a function that takes two lists and returns a list of pairs. So, if I give you a list that contains 1, 2, the number is 1, 2, and the list that contains the letters A, B, C, then the result should contain all the pairs 1A, 1B, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C, and so on. <coughs> and uh, another possibility would be to do an Enary Cartesian product, which takes a list of lists and returns a list of lists. So this is a generalization of the first one in the sense that uh, if we do n Cartesian with a list of two lists x's and y's then you should get something which is about the same as calling Cartesian with x's and y's except that this one will return uh, lists of size 2 while this one returns pairs tuples of size 2 but this one could have multiple lists so we, we could give it uh, say 10 lists and then it will generate all the uh, lists possible by taking the first element from the first list the second element from the second list the tenth element from the tenth list that it is given. Okay, that's a second question. The final question is a bit related to the OCaml language. 
So notice this, we have an argument here that is not really needed to be listed, so I can remove it, compile and get the same thing. And now it's clear that this pre function that we have is basically a functional composition, a, a composition of two functions, cons and refmap. So we can define an operator for function composition. and use it to define the function pre without explicitly naming the argument x. Now the question is the following. I comment this code and it stops compiling. What's the problem? Okay, that was all.